Friends, in this video, for iThought Advisor, I'm going to talk to you on the topic MFD versus RIA. As somebody who is very familiar with both the models, I'm going to share with you some perspectives which could be of help to you as an investor to make a choice of which one suits you. The first point I wish to make, whether you choose MFD or whether you choose RIA, the way I believe you should look at cost is only one simple method. That is, what is your return after all the expenses? If you have made a reasonable return which beats inflation and meets your expectations, then I believe that that method is perfectly all right. Most people are very worried if that cost is going to reduce their returns. I believe that you assume that the cost is sunk and then you calculate your returns. So, okay. so don't calculate your returns including the cost. So if you are in the distribution, if you are an MFD, then this problem doesn't arise because that cost is sunk and whatever you see as returns accrues directly to you. But if you are in an RIA, it's a different matter altogether because you pay out of the money that you have. So that money is paid out of your capital or profits according to the situation. So there again, you need to measure in the RIA, you need to measure your investment performance and then come to a conclusion whether you are satisfied with it. Cost is important, but cost obsession can be harmful. Let me tell you how. From what I have observed, a lot of people who choose to go direct and are small investors have built portfolios which are unwieldy, carrying multiple folios. Imagine a guy having 1 lakh rupees spread across some 20 funds, right? That's crazy. But a lot of people are doing this because every now and then they go into some platform or some place where people are just randomly buying investments based on what they hear or what they see not what they study or the study itself can be a bit superfluous like you're just looking at the number of stars which a fund has got from some uh, fund rating agency or something like that. Now all this has not really helped a whole lot of investors and that is the fact. Yes, they saved on that maybe 1% or 1.25% but they have created portfolios without understanding the spirit of portfolio construction or with proper risk profile related investment choices. So they have gone randomly and bought investments. So this has been happening a lot in the MFT and small investors have been doing this more. I believe that a small investor should have reasonable hand holding and in that sense you can possibly go to an MFT until you reach a certain scale. I think that a good base level for somebody to be in an MFD is up to at least 50 lakhs. So until your corpus grows to 50 lakhs, I think it makes sense for you to do the MFD. And even after you reach 50 lakhs, you make the judgment that, okay, this relationship with this distributor is working well for me. I don't need to fix what is not broke. So you can just continue with that equation altogether. A lot of HNIs have this dilemma whether they should go to MFD or not. If you are starting with a lot of money, let's say you are starting with more than 50 lakhs, then you have multiple choices. You can go to an RIA where you pay the fees out of your pocket and your earnings or you can go to a PMS where uh, you know everything is taken care of and uh, you know the fee recovery happens at the hand of the manager himself. So two options are there before you. But for a small investor, I believe it's very important that you have the right handholding. That handholding helps you understand your investments very well. It gives you conviction and it gives you confidence when the markets are low and it gives you moderation and caution when the markets are very high. Both these are invaluable. They are worth much more than the money that you spend towards uh, these uh, distributors, right? So if somebody is able to add that value to you, then certainly that is worth it because if you make those right decisions at the bottom and the top, then you are going to 
definitely benefit from that association and you are also going to grow your capital uh, in a manner which is uh, peaceful and which gives you a very good investment experience right investment experience is something which you can't value so easily but if your investment experience is right i am very sure that your capacity to create a big corpus is going to certainly be established and you are going to be able to achieve what is your potential. So, to do that, to achieve your potential, the costs you pay are relatively not very significant. But the important aspect, the key word, whether you are an MFD or an RAA, is to have measurement and use that measurement to understand where you are going and to know how you are going to improve your investment performance. A lot of people use measurements only in a negative way. Use measurement as a positive tool to improve your investment performance, to strengthen your relationship with your distributor and to get the best value out of that association. If you like this video, do share it with your friends who are very worried about the fees they pay, who don't know whether they are doing the right thing though they are on their own and not paying any fees. The line is very thin. And it's important that you understand the consequences of making a choice and taking a certain path. And you make a path where you have some handholding all the time. And that handholding in turn helps you achieve your investment potential. Thank you very much.